How dare you make me, how dare you make me defend the fact that Biden is a senile old fool and everyone's been able to see it for years, but we pretended it was a lie. How dare you make me admit that it was a lie all along? How dare you make me outline that I've got zero credibility? How dare you make me admit that? That's what she's saying here. Let's talk about Donald Trump instead because he's, all of these things I label him despite the fact the polls suggest that people don't seem to care. Or agree. many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a number. Is, do you but, think but, it's but, one million, three million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have it's an immigration system... It's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was, <laughs> when, when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours of taking the oath the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before, any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called... And well, it's interesting, right? It's the first thing she was asked is about the numbers that are coming over the border. She says, well, uh, let's get to the point. And the point was, or should have been, the numbers coming over the border. But no, 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 no. We can't talk about that because that makes her look incompetent. So she deflects for the next five minutes, um, or a few minutes. And now all of a sudden, she has to talk about the various, various different things that she did, um, or that she did after implementing changes to the border. These dramatic executive orders from President Biden when they, within hours, within hours of being inaugurated to fix the border crisis, which, of course, did the opposite. And, the U.S. Citizen, and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was essentially and, and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... May I finish? Yes, may, I finish may I finish responding, but please? You, but, this, but you have to let me finish. You have um, calm, no one needs to listen to you. No one needs to let you finish because you're not actually saying anything. Nothing of substance. You're not answering the question. You're waffling. You're waffling. You're waffling. Simply how it is. Hex Token says this election will determine freedom for the next 10 to 15. Um, Biden and Kamala open the floodgates to 12 to 18 million illegals after that oath. Exactly. And that, that's what this goes into. But of course, she will deflect. She'll continue to deflect. And she won't say anything of substance. She won't even defend her own policy and the white house and the house and the senate I'm and they the didn't bring up responding that bill. to the point you're raising okay. and i'd like to finish yes ma'am we recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question it is a priority for us as a nation and for the american people and our focus has been on fixing a problem and from day one then we have done a number of things and made it worse. Including to address our asylum system and pour, put more resources, getting more judges. To what ensure we, we can have more illegals coming in. penalties <laughs> and increase penalties for illegal crossings. What we needed to do to deal with AKA points, no penalties. points of entry between border entry points. That's the work we did. And we worked on supporting what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress to actually strengthen the border. 
That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States, which is a scourge affecting people of every background, every geographic location in our country, killing people. It would have allowed us to put more resources into prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, which I have done yes, as the attorney general, <laughs> former attorney general of a border state. Madam Vice President, oh, yeah. prosecuted Thanks. trafficking of drugs, six, guns, and human beings. And six Donald Democrats, Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald Trump voted against that bill. Learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred. Ah, the old conspiracy. Trump told them to kill the border bill. Of course, there's no real validity to that. Um, it was quite clear that the GOP's position was, if it's not perfect, then kill it. The reality is this bill still would have allowed for millions and millions of illegals to come over the southern border every single year, and that simply isn't compatible with the Republican policy on this issue. And so why they would vote for such a bill is beyond me. Um, it's blatant gaslighting. The simple matter is it's not consistent with what the GOP's position is, and as such, they voted it down. Um, Ortenis says, time for a woman president. A vote for Trump is a vote backwards for America. Well, if the reasoning for going for a woman is because she's a woman, well, then you're kind of missing the point of going forwards, aren't you? To run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And in this election, this is rightly a discussion that the American people want to have. And what they want are solutions, and they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue, I hear you. but actually is focused on fixing Six it. Six Democrats voted against that bill. It would have allowed 1.8 million illegal immigrants into the country a year. A lot, a lot of conservatives had a problem with it. These are the six Democrats. But more importantly, back to the original premise, Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, and literally this blame is well Biden and Harris negotiation. for that. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, no, do you no, no, owe right. those I families think really, I think an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a border security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together Madam Vice President. to ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election. The irony of that. And Sean does say, does she think repeating herself makes us believe her? Well, uh, the thing is, when you have absolutely nothing of substance to stay, all you can do is repeat yourself. That's all you can do. Um, and Hex Token says, Given NZ gave women the vote first in 1893, will history record that NZ destroyed the West? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a good point. I've got no issue with women voting, of course, but uh, let's not kid ourselves about the voting patterns relative to men um, and generally how um, things have gone as a result of certain types of governments. Um, but I... Some people view that as subjective. It's whatever. Who cares? But it, the irony of Kamala here saying is, you know, we should be electing someone, or the US should be electing someone that actually wants to do something about it and doesn't want to use an issue for political gain. Meanwhile, she's avoiding the fact that three women are dead because of her own policy, refuses to acknowledge that it was her own policy. The policy that she claimed was designed to improve things, but actually made it worse, dramatically worse. 
And then has the gall to suggest that she is the better choice to target the illegal immigration issue. It's actually disgusting. It's so disingenuous. It's gaslighting. And it all is politically advantageous. Because let's not pretend that these illegal immigrants aren't in some way influencing the election. We've seen it on video. Illegal immigrants querying people who deal with voter registration about how they can go about potentially voting. And there are people, there are literal groups within voter registration organizations designed to do that. Um, Orteni says, Trump is just as old as Biden. Harris is an educated woman. Trump is slightly younger than Biden, but he's far more onto it than Biden. Um, you just have to listen to you. You sit down and listen to him in a, a, a more generic scene. Just he's just an average bloke, honestly. Um, Sean says she isn't educated in the right areas. Then, cause couldn't agree more. <laughs> she is educated enough that she can lie her way through every position she's ever held. That she can kind of guess her way through. This is where it kind of you know the can kicks. Or the foot kicks the bucket, right? She can't bullshit her way into being a credible president. She can't bullshit her way into leading the free world. Especially when she doesn't even believe in the free world. Because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. No, you're not. That's why you're shaking your head. But let's talk about what is happening right now with... Hex Token says, The West protects women's rights. Well, at least up to recently, progressives and Islamists are taking over the West and subjugating women. That's the irony, right? Those that are the quickest to defend. Quickest to defend. Um, Islam are the very same people who pretend that the right, <laughs> that the right wing conservatives are subjugating women. An individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's talk about that as well. But do you Brett, want to in, answer in all fairness, I told you I feel awful for what she and her family have experienced. During that time, you said repeatedly that the border was secure. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? I think it, we've had a broken immigration system transcending, by the way, Donald Trump's administration even before. Let's, let's all be honest about that. I have no pride in saying that this is a perfect immigration system. I've been clear, I think we all are, that it needs to be fixed. We need more. Jo I was just down at the border talking with border agents, and they will tell you, and I'm sure you probably, I know you investigate and you are a, a serious journalist. They will tell you, we need more judges. We need, to process, we need to process those cases faster. We need the support for those cases that should be prosecuted. They need more resources. And Congress ultimately is the only place that that's going to get fixed, Brett. Well, that's how the system that's, works. That's the premise that's, of this question. But there were 90 the plus works. executive orders that were rescinded in the first days. Many of those were Trump border policies. I'm not going to stay here because... There's other things to talk about, but you frequently re talk to the Border Patrol Union for support of that bipartisan bill, and they did. They supported it. But they also just endorsed Donald Trump and said, you've been, quote, a failure with border security. Why do you think they said that? I think they're frustrated, and I get it. They want support. They want support, and that's what that border security bill would have done. These guys down at the border, these men and women, they're working hard. They're working around the clock. I get it. There's a lot of people that look back at what you said in 2019 when you first ran for president. Uh, and there have been changes, and you've talked about some of them. When it comes to immigration, you supported allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's license, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you su still support those things? 
Listen, that was five years ago, and I'm very clear that I will follow the law. I have made that statement over and over again, and as Vice President of the United States, that's exactly what I've done, not to mention before. Well, you notice here is she's being read a bunch of things that she's previously said, but she's pretending like, oh, I'll just follow the law. Well, the thing is, she has a lot of influence over the law as the Vice President um, working within the party that is, well, for a good chunk of the biden's presidency controlled the house um and so it's like she's pretending like these things weren't happening she's pretending like these things weren't happening at the state levels they were literally happening as a direct result of the biden harris administration <laughs> um, and so and so say sitting here and saying that oh yeah i'll just do what follows the law uh i'll just follow the law that's what i always do and, and saying so as if to be dismissive of the idea that she would dare implement anything resembling that. It, it's just so disingenuous. It's so dishonest. Because she, because she will. That's exactly what she wants to do. It's exactly what's been happening. It, it's actually ridiculous how... And this, this is the thing, right? The left over, over in the US right now will watch this and they'll say, Oh, she's so, she, she's so right. Absolutely nothing she just said was a lie at all. Even though she hasn't stated a single fact in this entire in this entire interview up to this point. Hasn't stated a single fact at all. She's just deflected or lied. Ortini says they might not like Biden, but at least they never tried to assassinate him. Well, they didn't try to assassinate him because he's not a threat to the deep state. Biden is a puppet of the deep state and can barely stand. Um, as Shans points out, because he isn't a threat and he can barely walk. Ortini says, what threat is Trump then while they're trying to shoot him? Uh, well, clearly, he's a threat because they're trying to shoot him. Yeah. You, if that's the case, you chose a running mate, Tim Walz, who, governor of Minnesota, who signed those very things into state law. So do you support that? We are very clear, and I am very clear, as is Tim Walz, that we must support and enforce federal law, and that is exactly what we will do. So decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings, and I've not done that as vice president. I will not do that as president. So these are evolutions I, and, and, that but, you've had. No, but let's be very clear. I'm the only person who's running for president who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations from the... This is the thing, right? So she's like, oh, I would never decriminalize border crossings, even though effectively under her current administration, albeit run by Biden or led by Biden, that's exactly what's happening. It is effectively decriminalized. Effectively. If not in, by, by, by law, <laughs> or at least not in the literal wording, in practice and in its interpretation, that's exactly what it is, decriminalized. Like... Seriously, if you've got a visa issue with the U.S., just go through the border. <laughs> You'll be fine. From the Sinaloa cartel to the Guadalajara quota cartel. Oh, so brave. You did your job. In guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent a significant part of my career going after people who present a threat to the safety of the American people and, and cross our border with the intent of doing us harm and cross our border illegally, and I will do that work as vice president. I take that work quite seriously. This is a time when voters, especially here in Pennsylvania, are... And I'll do that work as vice president. She can't even remember that she's actually going for the presidency, and that she has been vice president for the last three and a half years, and the exact opposite of what she just said happened. ...are inundated with commercials and ads. They just want it to stop because it's every commercial. But many of them add noise, but a few of them seem to break through. This particular one from the Trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. So... Are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with, now it's a public report, that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to 
on a medical necessity basis to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing you know, stones when you live in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no surgery. <laughs> what the irony of this is, right, is Trump's responsible for things he never supported, yet she's not responsible for the things that she herself has said. That is just some crazy, crazy logic. It's happened in this pregnancy. It's, it's so in black and white. Would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment I will follow the law. I will follow the law. I think so. Trump would say he did. You would have a say as president. I, like I said, I think it's real. He spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. Oh, Whereas, at yeah. $20 million on that ad, on an issue that, as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, is really quite remote. And again, his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on plans for the American we'll people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. And how do you plan I'm to do that, Kamala? I'm a plan that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy, as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which... So a bunch of left-leaning nonsense. Um, is she ever going to articulate what these uh, policies are? Because I've never heard them ever articulated, ever. Ever. ...have all studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy, his would make them weaker, why do you would think ignite more people inflation say, and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Those you, are the facts. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they trust you? I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as president of the United States. It has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump. People are ready to chart a new way forward. And they want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. His plan would be again to give tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations in our country and blow up our deficit. It's interesting you said turn the page, Madam Vice President. You were asked on two different shows last week what, if anything, you would do differently than President Biden. Here's what you said. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Under a Harris administration, what would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of, yes. but also it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. So, oh. you're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like, Isn't that interesting? So you've just changed your entire position from a week ago. A week ago, the only real difference between what your presidency would be and Joe Biden's is that you're not Joe Biden and you're not Donald Trump. Interesting. And seven days later, because you know that didn't exactly work, you're saying the opposite. This is, this is something that's quite common with uh, Comrade Kamala here. She says whatever she wants to say, whenever she wants to say it, irrespective of the question that's asked of her, irrespective of what she said yesterday, and irrespective of what the truth is. She just waffles, makes it up, and hopes people don't notice. There is a reason why she is polling a million times worse than Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton against Trump. There's a reason why she's currently only projected to win the popular vote, the national vote, by about 1.5%. That's not going to do it. She's got no chance in hell of winning an election when she can't even articulate how she's going to be different. 
when she can't even keep to the same story that she was using last week. Like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. I invite ideas, whether it be from the Republicans who are supporting me, who are, were just on stage with me minutes ago, and the business sector, and others who can contribute to the decisions that I make about, for example, my plan for increasing the supply of housing in America and bringing down the cost of housing. But what's the actual plan? Addressing the issue of small businesses, which is about working with the private sector to bring more capital and access to capital to our small business leaders, including my plan mm. for a $25,000 down payment assistance for first-time home buyers mm. and for small businesses extending the tax deduction from $5,000 to fifty thousand. We've heard a lot about those plans in, in recent days. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Rhetoric and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. You, the strength of an Vice American president. president. The strength of a leader is dependent on who you lift up. Okay, and how has that worked out for Israel? How has that worked out for Ukraine? How has that worked out for Palestine? The Gaza, for Lebanon, for Afghanistan. How's that worked out? Seriously. The reality is it hasn't done anything. It's only increased the likelihood of conflicts like these popping up. Because the US is viewed internationally as weak, as a laughing stock. People like to sit here and say, oh, Trump was a laughing stock, but there's a difference. The media around the world claiming he's a laughing stock is irrelevant. How the most influential world leaders view him is what matters. How the military rivals of the US view him is what matters. They have far more respect for Trump than they do a senile old man and his cackling DEI hire comrade. Why says, how is she dealing with Putin to end the war? The answer is she's not. And what's interesting is Zelensky today pretty much said that he's got a five-step plan for how the US, how the West can help Ukraine against Russia. And it essentially consists of doing a bunch of things that would result in World War III, including US boots on ground, including Ukraine joining NATO, including NATO bombing several areas of Russia, including to the Far East, deep into Russia. Literally World War Three. That is what he's advocating for. That's the sort of thing that a Harris presidency would consider. Should be stupid enough to do it. That's the sort of thing where the rhinos, the Liz Cheney's at the Republican Party, would support. And that's why so many people have rejected the likes of Liz Cheney on the right over in the US. And Dick Cheney. That's why they're all out there endorsing Kamala, because she is very much... A friend of the warmongers. They've got no plan to get us out of global conflict. It's in their best interest that we do get into global conflict. It's in the best interest of the globalists that we have a global conflict right now. Because they are losing control of the narrative. Losing control of the narrative. Sure, to some degree, to some degree, there is still a growing number of people buying into the globalist narrative. But on the other hand, there's also a growing number of people opposing to it. It was easy. It was easy to make it all work and slowly grow those sharing the um, globalist narrative when there wasn't much pushback, when people weren't talking about it. But now that people are, well, it's a completely different story. People are actively talking about the globalist threat. And as such, <laughs> and as such, uh, they are beginning to lose momentum. 
it's one thing to control academia, it's one thing to control the majority of mainstream media, it's one thing to control millions and millions and millions of people around the world. But if there is millions and millions of people who are actively pushing back against it, well that makes your intentions much harder. That makes your goals much harder. Right? A Trump presidency is literally a roadblock on the globalist plan. Trudeau losing in Canada next year is literally a roadblock in the globalist plan. Labour losing the election in New Zealand last year is a semi-roadblock, a roadblock but all the same, in the globalist plan. Much of the world is rejecting the globalist agenda bit by bit. Even Italy, even if some people still think that she's a bit of a globalist plant. President, ...which is one who understands that the vast majority of us have more in common than what separates us. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70% of people That is about posters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. More than people 70% are of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being Vice President and President Biden being President. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person been, holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have become. Power. But listen. Over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, the, the, the former chief of staff to the president, Donald Trump, uh, former defense secretaries, national security advisor, and his vice president, one that he is unfit to serve, that he is unstable, that he is dangerous, and that people are exhausted with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning and, and, and engaging in personal grievances and it being about him Madam instead Vice of President, the American people. People are case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's if not it's supposed. As- Honestly, I think that that little section there just highlights why she's so unequipped for the job that she's in- interviewing the nation for, right? Because she's been asked, "Why is it that the country is being is regarded as being on the wrong track so dramatically?" Like 79%, at least in that particular poll, 79% think it's in the wrong track. Her answer is, because Trump has been in the political limelight for 10 years. Somehow, the country's going in the wrong direction under the Biden administration, the Biden-Harris administration, because Trump is involved in politics. It doesn't make any sense. It makes absolutely no sense. And then asked why... If Trump is all of these horrible things, there's this terrible candidate, as she would like to point out, why is it he's then leading her in the majority of swing states? Her answer is, no one said this was going to be easy. Well, perhaps there's just no substance to anything you say, Kamala. Perhaps that's the case. Orteni says, Russia is on the other side. I'm presuming it means they're the enemy. Are they the enemy, though? Who is the enemy? I would argue that the globalists are a bigger threat than Russia. Certainly to us down here in New Zealand. It is not supposed to be a cakewalk So are they misguided, the 50%? Are they stupid? Oh God, I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish. She says, I would never call the American people stupid, but notably... He is called, at the very least, people of a certain age bracket. Stupid. That's just inherently how they are. They're stupid. All voters. She called them stupid. Simply because of their age. Sure, the context is very different. But the idea that she would never say that is, of course, a lie. Because she doesn't remember what she said yesterday. Probably doesn't even remember what she said five minutes ago. 
the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. Folks, well, uh, the question to the former president today, Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was like threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. Oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We no, but think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, Brett, I, I'm sorry. And with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people, that's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, 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 that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no. and I'm respect you to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, he didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning She's the American furious. military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about... <laughs> okay, so obviously she's lying through her teeth here. Um, but she's absolutely furious with him. How dare he show something that contradicts the propagandist narrative that the Democrats are trying so hard to push. They're trying so hard to push the idea that Donald Trump is intent on utilizing the military to deal with people who are dissidents. That's more or less what she's trying to say. That that Donald Trump has allegedly claimed that he will turn the US military on the enemy within. The enemy within being people who disagree with Trump. That's that's absolute nonsense. The enemy within are those actively working within the states, within the US, to create chaos, to create suffering. The people who actively engage in political violence. And, and acts that you would deem fascistic in manners, in some degree of the term. The, the people, the enemy within, aka the Democrat Party, party who actively do things against the best interests of the American public. But not that he wants to utilize them just against people because they have different views. But rather, he acknowledges that they may need to ha use the US military in an instance where there is mass violence, mass civil unrest as a result of a bunch of crying liberals. <laughs> because he acknowledges these people aren't sane, they aren't normal, they lose their minds as soon as you counter their bullshit narrative. That's the reality here. Trump has acknowledged that there are some crazy people, especially on the left, who will potentially resort to violence and civil unrest if he is elected. That's what he has stated. That's what he has said. Nothing more, nothing less. She's lying through her teeth. She does it on a regular basis. Her own ex-account literally cites lies or states lies. Primarily through the misrepresentation of facts of just continuing to cite Project 2025 over and over and over again, despite the fact that that's not Trump policy. I think this face of hers right now probably epitomizes her in a nutshell. She's an angry Indian Karen who utilizes some Caribbean blackness to try and manipulate a certain voter demographic into voting for her. That's disgusting. And funnily enough, whilst somehow she's still doing all right with black women, black men are saying, oh, hell no. I'm not interested. They're really getting turned off by her. And when she lies so blatantly, is it any surprise? Honestly, she's got zero credibility at all. Only the utterly ideologically captured delusional sheep can trust a single thing coming out of her mouth. At all. Braden says, Fox News is so corrupt, barely a reputable news agency. You could say the exact same thing about CNN, MSNBC, CBS, ABC... Pretty much any mainstream media network in the world. In every country. If you trust mainstream media for news, then you're stupid. Cross-reference it, and then you'll figure out what is true and what isn't. Do your own research. That's really what you have to do these days. Locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. False. And in, this in is a, a democracy, democracy, also false. the President of the United States, in the United States of America should be 
willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. Stop lying, Kamala. Is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. Uh, Let me ask you this, no, Madam no, Vice no, President. But you call Donald Trump... Let's not Donald diminish Trump. the significance you, you, you of that. You call Donald Trump... Let's not diminish um, the significance of the assassination attempt, but you guys forget you about now it. He's he unstable. unstable. He is unstable, but... Uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told and many interviewers She's that crazy, Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions. On Woke sick, you are people. correct. There were no concerns raised. Brett, a Joe puppet Biden of the NWO. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump But you is, talked about it. And Donald Trump After George is, Clooney said within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought this Brett, was not the Brett, same Joe Biden that we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. I understand. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump. Which- how dare you make me how dare you make me defend the fact that Biden is a senile old fool and everyone's been able to see it for years, but we pretended it was a lie. How dare you make me admit that it was a lie all along? How dare you make me outline that I've got zero credibility? How dare you make me admit that? That's what she's saying here. Let's talk about Donald Trump instead, because he's all of these things I label him despite the fact the polls suggest that people don't seem to care. Or agree. Which is why the people who know him best including leaders of our national security community, have all spoken out, even people who worked for him in the Oval Office, worked with him in the Situation Room, and have said he is unfit and dangerous and should never be president of the United States again, including his former vice president, which is why the job was open for him to choose another running mate. So that is a fact. That is a a fact. Madam Vice President, two more things. You were asked on 60 Minutes about the biggest threat that the world faces, that the U.S. faces. This is what you said. Which foreign country do you consider to be our greatest adversary? I think there's an obvious um, one in mind, which is Iran. Iran has American blood on their hands. Okay, the, this attack on Israel, 200 ballistic missiles. Um, what we need to do to ensure that um, Iran never achieves the ability to be a nuclear power, that is one of my highest priorities. A number of extra experts thought you would say China. Um, the FBI director had said that. But you said Iran. If that's the case, what do you say to critics? Uh, who look at the actions of your administration and say you're not acting like Iran is the number one threat? Well, uh, I will tell you most recently, whether it was in April or in October, in the several hours on each occasion that Iran posed a threat to Israel, I was there. Uh, Most recently in the Situation Room, in the most recent attack, working with the heads of our military and doing what America must always do to defend and to support Israel in its requirement to defend itself and to give American support to be able to allow Israel to have the resources to defend itself against attack, including from Iran and Iran's terrorist proxies in the region. Right. And that is and, and my by commitment Iran. to that is unyielding and unwavering. Critics just say that you either relaxed or failed to, to enforce sanctions on Iran, allowing all of this money to flow let, into Iran. Like let, billions let, Let's in go back to Donald profits. Trump who, on, who pulled that, out of who pulled out of a deal that would have actually put but here Iran are the, in check. The estimates and then in billions it was during Donald Trump's that administration that Iran, Iran 
regime. That, that we had a, an American military base that was attacked, where American soldiers suffered traumatic brain injuries, and Donald Trump dismissed them as headaches. Not to mention Madam how Vice Donald President, Trump has, all of this money has treated and has talked about America's military and military service people Critics calling them that it suckers to and losers, Hamas has diminished and the significance. We're talking over each other. I apologize. Well, I, and I, and but, I, but I, I, wish I would like Honestly, this is what she does. She just talks, talks, talks about something that's either partially related or completely unrelated to the point and just ignores what the actual point is because she knows the actual the actual truth of the matter is not favorable the biden administration's decisions enabled iran to make billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars and as a result they're able to more effectively fund all of their proxies, the Houthis, the Hezbollah, and Hamas, all of which are now attacking Israel. All of which are actually impacting trade to the West, impacting our economies, impacting our gas prices, and so forth. She just avoids it because she knows her record is terrible. Now, Woke 6 says, Pence was a part of the establishment, CIA, CIA and all that. He wasn't what he pretended to be. Exactly. And that's a far better way of putting it. She's insufferable, she's insufferable and then she speaks and then it's even worse, I know. She can't do anything but lie. That is her MO. That is all she has. Lies and deflection. That we would have a, a conversation that is grounded in full assessment of the facts which includes, I think this interview is supposed to be about the choices that your viewers should be presented about this election, and the contrast is important. Yes, ma'am. And And on the subject of Iran, I am offering what should be an an important contrast that is presented for folks to make a decision that they feel... And there are critics who look at what the administration did and and think differently. Madam Vice President, they're wrapping me very hard here. I Her handlers to wanted to say end it. What she wanted to say about Donald Trump, there are a lot of things. There's more to say. I have there, much more there are to say, a lot actually. of things that people want to learn about you and your policies, yes. and that's why we I invite you everyone here. to go to KamalaHarris.com, and you will see that I have 80 uh, pages of policies that are quite comprehensive and should be um, accessible to anyone who would like to read them. And it includes what I intend to do about affordable housing, what I intend to do about small businesses, what I do to strengthen our economy. And that's why we invited you here, to see where you were in 2019 and where you are now. America's military and ensure we have the most lethal and best fighting force in the world. Madam Vice President, they're giving me a hard rap Well, I thank you for the time. I thank you for the time. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honestly, if that does not make you want to rip out your eardrums, then nothing will. There is never, there has never been an interview that I've seen with a presidential candidate in my lifetime, I'm still young, but let's be real, that has been more pathetic. This almost makes Biden's debate performance against Trump look okay. Provide me a question asked Name the question asked in that in that in that little discussion for twenty six minutes that she actually answered that she answered with an actual answer that was directly addressing the question that wasn't some form of deflection that wasn't just name dropping Trump for absolutely no reason. Provide me just one example of that. She failed every single time. She has zero substance. She got angry. She got irate. How dare this guy? How dare this Fox News journalist? And it appears at least that he is one. Thank goodness. How dare he refuse to adopt my propaganda narrative? How dare he fact check me throughout the interview? How dare he? And that's why her handlers told him to wrap it up. People look at Trump. And say, oh, Trump's this, he's this, he's this, uh, you know, this lunatic. He's unstable. 
by comparison, Trump is an extremely calm individual with facts. You know, when Trump isn't pissed off, and occasionally is, and he is extremely, extremely relatable. He's extremely, extremely effective at relaying his message. But we never see that on the news, do we? Especially outside of the US. We just see what the news wants us to see. Which is him dancing for 40 minutes while there's medical emergencies or tenny. I, I, I find it so difficult that anyone can sit here and celebrate Kamala as this incredible candidate. They are utterly delusional and aren't people you should ever take serious, seriously. You should certainly never take advice from them. Sirens.